Full stack observability is all the rage today. As businesses lean into digital, customer experience becomes ever more important. Why? Well, it's obvious. Fickle consumers can switch brands in the blink of an eye or the click of a mouse. Technology companies have sprung into action and the observability space is getting pretty crowded in an effort to simplify the process of figuring out the root cause of application performance problems without an army of PhDs in lab coats, also known as endlessly digging through logs, for example. We see decades old software companies that have traditionally done monitoring or log analytics and or application performance management stepping up their game. These established players, you know, they typically have deep feature sets and sometimes purpose built tools that attack one particular segment of the marketplace. And now they're pivoting through M&A and some organic development, trying to fill gaps in their portfolio. And then you got all these new entrants coming to the market, claiming end-to-end -end visibility across the so-called modern cloud and now edge native stacks. Meanwhile, cloud players are gaining traction and participating through a combination of native tooling combined with strong ecosystems to address this problem. But you know, recent survey research from ETR confirms our thesis that no one company has it all. Here's the thing, customers just want to figure out the root cause as quickly and as efficiently as possible. It's one thing to observe the stack end to end, but the question is who is automating the observers? And that's why we're here today. Hello, my name is Dave Vellante and welcome to this special CUBE presentation where we dig into root cause analysis and specifically how one company, Zebrium, is using unsupervised machine learning to detect anomalies and pinpoint root causes and delivering it as an automated service. And in this session, we have two deep dives. First, we're going to dig into this exciting new field of RCAS, root cause as a service, with two of the founders and technical experts behind Zebrium. And then we bring in two technical experts from Cisco, an early Zebrium customer who ran a POC with Zebrium's service, automating and identifying root cause problems within four very well-established and well-known Cisco product lines, including WebEx client and UCS. I was pretty amazed at the results and I think you'll be impressed as well. So thanks for being here, let's get started. With me right now is Larry Lancaster, who's a founder and CTO of Zebrium. And he's joined by Rod Bagg, who's the a founder and vice president of engineering at the company. Gents, welcome. Thanks for coming on. Thanks. Good to be here. All right, Rod, talk to me. Talk to me about software downtime, what root cause means, all the buzzwords in your domain, MTTR and SLO. What, what do we need to know? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like you said. I mean, it's extremely important to, the, to our, our customers and to, to most businesses out there. To, to drive uptime and, and avoid as much downtime as possible. So it, it, you know, when you think about it, all of these businesses, most, most companies nowadays, either their, their product is software and it's running, you know, running on the web and that, that's how you get a point and click, um, or, or their business depends on it in you know, internal systems to, to drive their business and to run it. Uh, when that is down, that is hugely impacting to them. So if you, if you take a look you know, way back, you know, 20, 30 years ago, software was simple. You know, there, there wasn't much to it. It was pretty monolithic. It, maybe it took a couple of people to maintain it and, and keep it running. It wasn't really anything complicated about it. It was a single tenant piece of software. Today's software is so complicated, often running you know, maybe hundreds of services um, to, to keep that or, or to actually implement uh, what that software is doing. So you, it, as you point out, you know, enter the sort of observability space and, and the tools that are now in use to, to help monitor that software and make sure when something goes wrong, they know about it. But th there's kind of an interesting stat around the observability space. So when you look at observability in the context or through the lens of the cost of downtime, it's really interesting. So observability tools are about a $20 billion market, okay? But the cost of downtime, even with that in place, is still hundreds of billions of dollars. So you're not taking much of a, a bite out of what the real problem is. You have to solve root cause and get to that fast. So it's all great to know that something went wrong, but you got to know why. And it, it's our contention here that, you know, really when you take a look at the observability space, you have metrics. That's a great tool. I mean, there's lots of great um, tools out there with, you know, around metrics monitoring that's going to tell you when something went wrong. It's very rarely it's going to tell you why. Similarly for tracing, it's going to point you to where the issue is. It's going to take you through that stack and probably pinpoint where you're, you're being, you know, where it's happening or, or where something is running slow potentially. 
Um, so that's great. But again, the root cause of why it's happening is going to be buried in log files. And I, I can expand on, the, on, on that a little bit more, but um, you know, when you're a software developer and you're writing your software, those log files are a wealth of information. It, it's just a set of breadcrumbs that are littered with, with facts about how the software is behaving and why it's doing what it's doing or why it went wrong. And it's that that really gets you to the root cause very fast. Um, and, and, and that's our contention is that these software systems are so complex nowadays and that the root cause is lying in those logs. So how do you get there fast? Uh, we, you know, we would contend that you better automate that or you're just doomed for failure. And, and that's where we come in, Great. getting to that root cause. Th thank you, Rod. You know, it's interesting. You talk about the $20 billion market. There's, a, there's an analogy with security, right? We spend 80, $100 billion a year on securing our infrastructure. And yet we lose probably closer to a trillion dollars a year in, in, in breaches. And there's a similar analogy here. 20 billion could be 5X in, in, in downtime exactly. impacts or more. Okay, let's go to Larry. Tell us a little bit more about Zebrium. I'm interested always in, in for, ask a founder why you started the company. Uh, Rod touched on that a little bit. You guys have invented this concept of, of RCAS. What does it mean? What problems does it solve? And, and how does it solve the problem? Let's get into it. Yeah, hey, thanks Dave. So I, I, think, I think when you said, you know, who's automating the observer, that, that's a great way to think about it because what, what's, what's hap what observability really means is it's a property of a system that means you can see into it, you can observe the internal state, and that makes it easier to troubleshoot, right? But the problem is if it's if it's too complicated, you, you just push the bottleneck up to your eyeball. There's only so much a person can filter through manually, right? And I love the way you put that. So so that's a great way to think about it, is automating the observer. Now, of course, it means that you know you reduce your MTTR, you meet your service level object objectives, all that stuff. You improve customer experience. That's all true, but it's it's important to step back and realize like we have we have cracked a real nut here. People have been trying to figure out how to automate this part of sort of the troubleshooting experience, this human part of finding the root cause indicators uh, for a long time, and and and. Until Zebrium came along, I would argue no one's really done it right. So, you know, I, I think it's also important, you know, as we step back, we can we can probably look forward five to 10 years and say, everyone's going to look back and say, how did we do all this manually? You're going to see uh, the, the sort of last mile of, uh, of observability and troubleshooting is going to be automated everywhere uh, because otherwise, you know, pe people are just, they're not going to be able to scale their business. So, you know, I think one more thing that's important to, to point out is, you know, I think Zebrium, you know, it, it it's, it's one thing to have the technology, but we've learned we need to deliver it right where people are today. You can't just expect people to dive into a new tool. So, you know, we're looking at, uh, you know, if you look at Zebrium, you'll put us on your on your dashboard and we don't care what kind of a dashboard it is. It, it could be, you know, uh, Datadog, New Relic, uh, Elastic, Dynatrace, Grafana, App Dynamics, uh, Science Logic, we don't care. You know, they're all our friends. Uh, so we're more interested in getting to that root cause than, than trying to fight, you know, these incumbents and all that stuff. Yep. Yeah, so interesting. Again, uh, another analogy, I think about, you know, you talked about automation. We're going to look back and say, this is, we're never going to do this again. It's like provisioning LUNs. Nobody provisions LUNs anymore. It's all automated. <laughs> That's great. Um, so Larry, stay with you. The, you know, the skeptic in me it says, this sounds amazing, but it might, you know, it might be too good to be true. Tell us how it works. <laughs> yeah, so that's interesting. So, so Cisco came along and they were equally skeptical. So what they did was uh, they, they took a couple of months and they did a, a very detailed study. And they, they, they got together 192 incidents across four product lines where they knew that the root cause was in the logs and they knew what that root cause was because they had had their best engineers, you know, uh, work on those cases and take detailed notes of the incidents that had taken place. Um, and so, and so they ran that data through the Zebrium software. Uh, and what they found was that in more than 95% of those incidents, Zebrium uh, reflected the correct root cause indicators at the correct time. Like that blew us away. When we saw that kind of evidence, Dave, I have to tell you, everyone was just jumping up and down. It was like, 
it was like the you know it was like the the uh, the Apollo command center you know when they finally you know <laughs> you know touched down on the moon kind of thing so you know it's 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 really exciting uh, at a, a point in time to be at the company like just seeing everything finally being proven out according to this vision I'm going to tell you one more story which is actually one of my favorites because we got a chance to work with Seagate Live Cloud. So that so so they're you know a hyper modern you know SaaS business. They're an S3 competitor. Uh, Zoom has their files stored on on Live Cloud uh, to if you know to let you know who they are. So so essentially um, what happened was they were in in alpha in early access and they had an outage and it was pretty bad. I mean it went on for for longer than a day actually um, before they were completely restored. <clears throat> and it was, you know, fortunately for them, it was early access. So no one was expecting, you know, uptime, you know, uh, service level uh, uh, objectives and so on. But but they were scared because they realized if something like this happens in production, you know, they're, they're, they're screwed. So what they did was um, they, they saw Zebrium. They went, did some research. They saw Zebrium. They went in, in, in a staging environment, recreated the exact event that they had had. And what they saw was uh, immediately Zebrium pops up a root cause report that tells them exactly the root cause that they took over a day to find. These are the kind of stories that let us know we're onto something transformation. Yeah, that's great. I, I mean, you, you, were, you guys are jumping up and down. I'm sure we're going to hear from Cisco later. I bet you they were jumping up and down too because they didn't have to do all <laughs> that heavy lifting anymore. So, so Rod, Larry's just sort of implying that you're, or you actually you guys both talked about that your tool's agnostic. So how does one actually use the service? How do I deploy it? Yeah, so, so let me step back. So when we talk about logs, right? Like, you know, all these breadcrumbs being in logs and everything else. So, you know, they are a great wealth of you know, information, but people hate dealing with them. I mean, they hate having to go in and figure out what log to look at. In fact, you know, we had one of our, um, or we've heard from several of our customers now prior to using Zebrium, when, when they're, you know, have some issue and, and they, they know there's something wrong, something on their dashboard has told them that something's wrong. Maybe a metrics is, you know, taking a blip or some, something's happened that they know there's a problem. We've, we've heard from them that it can take a, like a number of hours just to get to the right set of logs, like figuring out over these hundreds of services where the logs are uh, to get to them, maybe searching in a log manager, just to get into the right context even can take hours. So, we, you know, th that's obviously the problem we solve, but we, you know, we, we don't want them just looking at logs. I mean, that, you know, we, we don't want to put them back in the thing they don't like doing because people don't do that, they don't like doing. So we, we put it up on the dashboard. So if something is going wrong with your metrics and that's the indicator, or maybe it's something with tracing that you're sort of digging through now that you know something's wrong, we will be right on that same dashboard. So we're deployed as a SaaS service. You send us your logs, you uh, click on one of our integrations and we integrate with all these tools that Larry's talked about. Um, and, and when we detect anything that is a root cause report, it will show up on your dashboard in the same timeline as those blips in your metrics. So when, when you see something going wrong and you know there's an issue, take a look at the portion of your dashboard that is us and we're going to tell you why. So we're going to get you to the why that went wrong. Not, no other work to be, you can, all, you can you know, also click down and click through to us so that you end up in our portal if you want to do some more uh, digging around if you need to or, or whatever, maybe to get some context, what have you. But it's rare that you ever need to do that. The answer should be right there on your dashboard. And that that's how we expect people to, to use it. We don't want them digging in logs and going through things. We want it to be right in their workflow. Great, Th thank you, Larry. So Rod, we talked about Cisco. We're going to hear more from them in a moment uh, in Seagate. I, I would think this is like a perfect solution for a, 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 a SaaS provider, anybody doing AI ops. Do you have some yep. examples of those types of firms leaning into this? Yeah, a couple of great, well, I mean, we got many of them, but a couple that I'll, I'll touch on. We, we have a, um, an actual AI ops company um, that was looking for, for, you know, sort of some complementary technology and so on. And so they, they decided to just put us through our paces by having one of their own SREs uh, sign up for our service in our SaaS environment and send the logs from their system to us, um, you know, and, and just see how we did. So it turned out we we ended up talking back to this SRE like a week after he had installed the product uh, or you know signed up, and and you know started sending us logs. And you know he was him and Han saying that he was busy like you know like every SRE is, um, and that he didn't have a chance to really do much with us yet. 
And, you know, we just, you know, having this conversation on the phone and he, he comes to tell us that, yeah, I've been busy because we had this, you know, terrible outage, like, you know, <laughs> five days ago. And we said like, okay, did you actually look on the Zebrium dashboard? <laughs> and he goes, you know what? I didn't even think to do it yet. I mean, I, I just been so busy and frazzled. So um, we have an integration with that company. We they he hadn't put that integration in, so it wasn't in his dashboard yet. But it was certainly on ours. So he went there, and and he looks and he looks on the day, uh, uh, like you know, on on the time range of when he had had this incident. And right at the very top of the page on our portal was the incident with the root cause, and he was flabbergasted. It 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 literally would have saved him hours and hours and hours. They were they, they had this issue going on for over twenty four hours. And we had the answer right there in five minutes. I mean, it was crazy. And we get that kind of story. It's just like the Seagate one. If you use us and you have a problem, we're going to detect it. And you're going to hear from, from Cisco how successful we are at detecting things. I mean, it'll be there when you, when you have a problem. And SaaS companies, you know, one of our, our customers is our Chera. Um, they, they do cost optimizations for, for um, cloud properties, you know, for AWS uh, optimization, uh, Google, Google Cloud, and so on. Um, but but they use our software and they they have a lot of interaction, obviously, with these cloud vendors and the APIs of those cloud vendors. So, you know, in order to figure out your costing at AWS, they're using all those APIs. So it turned out we, you know, they, they had some issue that they uh, were, their services were breaking. And we had that root cause report right on the screen within, again, within five minutes that was pointing to an API problem with Google and they had changed one of their APIs and our chair was not aware of it. So their stuff was breaking because of a change downstream that we had caught. And, and, I'll, and I'll just tell you one last one because it's somewhat related to, to, um, to one of these cloud vendors of, you know, this big cloud vendor um, who had an outage a couple of months ago. And it's interesting because, you know, a lot of our customers will set up sl shared Slack channels with us where we're monitoring or, or seeing their incidents as well as they are. So we get a little Slack um, representation of, of the incident that we detected for them or the root cause that we detected for them. And that's in a shared community channel. So we could see this happening when that AWS outage happened. We could see our customers getting impacted by that AWS outage and the root cause of what was going on there in AWS that was impacting our customers. That was showing up in our incidents. Now we didn't obviously you know, have the very root cause of what was going on in AWS per se, but we, we were getting to the root cause of why their our customers' applications were failing. And that was because of issues going on at AWS. Yeah, interesting. I, I mean, I think one of your biggest challenges is going to be getting people's attention because these SREs are so busy, their hair's on fire. Right. You know? <laughs> hey, tap them on the I shoulder. You, if you get their attention, they, they love it. I mean, this, this, <laughs> this AI ops company, I didn't even tell you the punchline there. But uh, you know they, they had this incident that occurred that we we found, and quite literally the next week they ended up signing up as a paid customer. So that's great. And 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 Larry, I'll give you the last word. I mean, you know, Rod was talking about you know API changes in APIs, and you know, there's still a lot of scripts out there. You guys, if I understand it correctly, run both as a service in the cloud, and you can run on prem, which is important because there's a lot of sensitive information and in, in, in logs, and people that's don't right. want to leave. That's right. Absolutely. But but, but yep. uh, close yeah. it out here. Yeah, I mean, you can, that's right. You can run it on-prem just like we run it in our cloud. You can run it in your cloud uh, or on your own infrastructure. No, that's all true. You know, I, I think the one, I think the one hurdle now that we have left as a company is getting the word out and, and getting people to believe that this is actually possible and try it for themselves. You don't believe it, do a POC, try it yourself. And, and it's, it, you know, people have become so jaded uh, by the lack of, you know, real uh, sort of innovation in the software industry for the last 10 years that it's hard to get people to, but guys, you got to give it a shot. I'm telling you, I'm telling you right now it works and uh, you'll hear more about that uh, from one of our customers in a minute. All right, guys, thanks so much. Great story, really appreciate you sharing. Yeah, Thank you. Thanks Dave, appreciate the time. Okay, in a moment, we're going to hear from Cisco, who is the customer in this case example, and a company that is, they got, look, they have quite an impressive suite of observability tooling, and they've done a pretty compelling proof of concept with Zebrium using real data on some Cisco products that you've heard of, like WebEx. So stay tuned and learn about how you can really take advantage of this new technology called Root Cause as a Service. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in enterprise and emerging tech coverage. Hello, Zebrium Root Cause as a Service helps solve the age-old problem of finding the root cause when a software or infrastructure failure occurs. 
A recent third-party study showed it can identify the best root cause indicators in the logs in over 95% of incidents. And the best part is you see the results directly on your existing monitoring dashboards. Let's see it in action. I've installed an online shopping app on a Kubernetes cluster. It's being monitored by Datadog and logs are being sent to Zebrium. The dashboard shows everything is healthy. I'm now going to simulate a real life failure by running a chaos experiment that corrupts the network in one of the pods in the cluster. After a moment, the app stops working and the dashboard shows network traffic and CPU have dropped to zero. Soon after, the Zebrium app widget detects something. Quick aside, there were no rules in place to detect this. The NLP summary here provides a nice clue of what happened. Clicking it shows a word cloud with pod network corruption, the name of the experiment I ran, right at the top. Let's view the full report. Millions of log lines were generated while the failure occurred, but Zebrium picked out just 46 from seven different services. The 46 lines tell the story. The root cause is the chaos runner starting and kicking off a network corruption experiment, which caused a queue length misconfig on ETH0. Then we see the symptoms, how it impacted the app, a timeout in the orders service, a 500 error in the front end service, and a socket exception in the cart service. All this was picked out automatically with no manual training or rules. With Zebrium, you never need to dig through logs again. Getting started with Zebrium in your monitoring tool is easy. Book a demo or start a free trial at zebrium.com. Okay, we're back with Atri Basu, who is Cisco's resident philosopher, who also holds a master's in computer science. We're going to have to unpack that a little bit. And Najati Cherheli, who's technical lead at Cisco. Welcome guys, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Happy to be here. Thanks a lot. All right, let's get into it. We want you to explain how Cisco validated the Zebrium technology and the proof points that, that you have that it actually works as advertised. So first, Atri, tell, first tell us about Cisco TAC. What does Cisco TAC do? So PAC, is uh, otherwise, it's an acronym for Technical Assistance Center, is Cisco's support arm, the support organization. And, um, you know, the risk of sounding like I'm spouting a corporate line, the, the easiest way to summarize what PAC does is provide world-class support to Cisco customers. What that means is um, we have about 8,000 engineers worldwide, and any of our Cisco customers can either go on our web portal or call us to open a support request. And uh, we get about 2.2 million of these support requests a year. And what these support requests are, are essentially the customer will describe something that they need done, some networking goal that they have that they want to accomplish. And then it's tax job to make sure that that goal does get accomplished. Now, it could be something like um, they're having trouble with an existing network solution and it's not working as expected. Or it could be that they're integrating with a new solution, they're you know, upgrading devices, uh, maybe there was a hardware failure, um, anything really to do with networking support and you know, the customer's network goals. If they open up a case requesting for help, then tax job is to, uh, is to respond and make sure the customer's uh, you know, questions and requirements are met. Um, about 44% of these support requests are usually trivial and you know, can be solved within a call or within a day, but the rest of TAC cases really involve uh, getting into the network device, looking at logs. Um, it's a very technical role. It's a very technical job. Uh, you're you're, you need to be conversant with network um, solutions, their designs, protocols, et cetera. Wow, so 56% non-trivial. And so I would imagine you spend a lot of time Digging through through logs is that is that true? Can you quantify that? Like you know, every month, how much time do you spend digging through logs, and is that a pain point? Yeah, it's interesting you ask that because when we started this uh, on this journey to augment our support engineers' workflow with Zebrium solution, one of the things that we did was we went out and asked our engineers uh, what their experience was like doing log analysis, and the anecdotal evidence was that on average an engineer will spend three out of their eight hours reviewing logs either online or offline. So what that means is 
either with the customer live on a WebEx, they're going to be going over logs, network state information, et cetera, or they're going to do it offline where the customer sends them the logs. It's attached to a, you know, a service request and they review it and try to figure out what's going on and provide the customer with information. Um, so it's a very large chunk of our day. Um, you know, I said 8,000 plus engineers and so three hours a day, that's 24,000 man hours a day spent on log analysis. Um, now, the struggle with logs or analyzing logs is that by out of necessity, logs are very contrite. They try to pack a lot of information in a very little space. And uh, this is for performance reasons, storage reasons, et cetera. Um, but the side effect of that is they're very esoteric. So they're hard to read if you're not converse and if you're not the developer who wrote these logs or you are you aren't doing code deep dives and you're looking at where this log's getting printed and things like that it may not be immediately obvious or even after a little while it may not be obvious what that log line means or how it correlates to whatever problem you're troubleshooting so it requires tenure it requires um, you know, like I was saying before, it requires a lot of knowledge about the protocol, what's expected, because when you're doing log analysis, what you're really looking for is a needle in a haystack. You're looking for that one anomalous event, that single thing that tells you this shouldn't have happened and this was a problem, right? Um, now, doing that kind of anomaly detection requires you to know what is normal. It requires you to know what the baseline is, and that requires a very in-depth understanding of you know, the state changes for that network solution or product. So it requires time, tenure, uh, and expertise to do well. And it takes a lot of time, even when you have that kind of expertise. Wow, so thank you, Atri. And Najati, that's, that's about, that's almost two days a week for, for a technical resource that's, that's not inexpensive. So what was Cisco looking for to sort of help with this and, and how'd you stumble upon Zebrium? Yeah, so um, I mean, uh, we have our internal automation system, which has been running uh, more than a decade now. Um, and uh, what happens is when a customer attaches a log bundle or diagnostic bundle into the service request, uh, we take that from the SR, uh, we analyze it and um, we represent some kind of information, uh, you know, it can be alerts or some tables, some graph to the engineer so they can, um, you know, troubleshoot this particular issue. Um, this is an incredible system, uh, but it comes with um, its own challenges around maintenance to keep it up to date and relevant with Cisco's new products or a new version of the product, uh, new defects, new issues, and all kinds of things. Uh, and when I, what I mean with those challenges are, uh, let's say Cisco comes up with a product today. Um, we need to come together with those engineers. We need to figure out how this bundle works, how it's structured out. Um, we need to select individual logs which are relevant and then start modeling these logs um, and get some uh, values out of those logs using parsers or some regexes um, to come to a level that we can consume the logs. And then people start writing rules on top of that abstraction. So people can say, in this log, I'm seeing this value together with this other value in another log. Maybe I'm hitting this particular defect. Um, so that's how it works. And uh, if you look at it, the abstraction, it can fail the next time in the next release when the development or the engineer decides to change that log line, which you write that regex. Um, or we can come up with a new version, which we completely change the services or processes, then whatever you have wrote needs to be rewritten for that new service. And we see it a lot with uh, products like, for instance, WebEx, where you have a very short release cycle that it, things can change maybe the next week with a new release. So whatever you are writing, uh, especially for that abstraction and for those rules are maybe not uh, relevant with that new release. Um, uh, with that being said, we have an incredible um, um, rule creation uh, process and governance process around it, which uh, starts with um, maybe a defect, um, and then uh, it takes it to a level where we have an automation in place. But if you look at it, this really ties to um, human bandwidth. And our engineers are really busy working on you know, uh, customer facing, working on issues daily, and sometimes 
creating these rules or these uh, parsers um, are not their biggest priority. So they can be delayed a bit. Um, so we have this delay between a new uh, issue being identified to a level where we have the automation to detect it next time that some customer faces it. Um, so with all these um, questions and with all challenges in mind, uh, we start looking into ways of actually how we can automate these automation. So these things that we are doing manually, how we can move it a bit further and automate. And um, we had uh, actually a couple of things in mind that we were looking for. Um, and this being one of them being, this has to be product agnostic. Like um, if Cisco comes up with a product tomorrow, I should be able to take it logs without writing, you know, uh, complex regexes, parsers, whatever, and deploy it into this system so it can embrace our logs and make sense of it. And we wanted this platform to be unsupervised, so none of the engineers need to create rules, um, you know, label logs, this is bad, this is good, um, or train the system, like, which requires a lot of computational uh, power. And the other most important thing for us was uh, we wanted this to be um, not noisy at all because what happens with noise is um, when your level of false positives is really high, your engineers start ignoring the good things between that noise. So uh, they start the next time you know, um, thinking that this thing will be not be relevant. So we want something with a lot less noise. And ultimately, we wanted this new platform or new uh, framework to be easily adaptable to our existing workflows. So uh, this is where we started. Uh, we start looking into the, um, you know, um, first of all, internally, if we can build this thing and also start researching it. And we came up to Zebrium. Actually, uh, Larry, uh, one of the co-founders co um, of Zebrium, um, we came upon his presentation where he clearly explained why this is different, how this works, and it uh, immediately clicked in and we said, okay, this is exactly what we were looking for. Um, we dived deeper, we checked the blog posts where Zebrium guys really explain everything very clearly there. They are really open about it. And most importantly, there is a button in their system. And so uh, what happens usually with AI ML vendors is they have this button where you fill in your details and a sales guy call you back and you know explains the system. Here, uh, they were like, this is our trial system. Uh, we believe in the system. You can just sign up and try it yourself. And that's what we did. Um, we took our uh, one of our uh, Cisco Live DNA Center wireless platforms, um, we start streaming logs out of it. Uh, and then uh, we synthetically, you know, introduce errors like we broke things. Um, and then uh, we realized that Zebrium was really catching the errors um, perfectly. And on top of that, it was really quiet unless you are really breaking something. And um, the other thing we realized was during that uh, uh, first trial is um, Zebrium was actually bringing a lot of context uh, on top of the uh, logs um, during those failures. We worked with a couple of technical leaders and they said, okay, if this failure happens, I I'm expecting this individual log to be there. And we found out with Zebrium, apart from that individual log, there were a lot of other things which gives a bit more context around the root cause, which mm -hmm. was great. And uh, that's where we wanted to take it to the next level. Yeah, um, okay. So, you know, a couple of things to unpack there. I mean, you have the dartboard behind you, which is kind of interesting because a lot of times it's like throwing darts at the board to try to figure this stuff out. Uh, but to your other point, Cisco actually has some pretty rich tools uh, with AppD and doing observability and you've made acquisitions like Thousand Eyes. And like you said, I'm, I'm presuming you got to eat your own dog food or drink your own champagne. And so you've got to be tools ag agnostic. And when I first heard about Z Zebrium, I was like, wait a minute, really? I was kind of skeptical. You know, I've heard this before. You're telling me all I need is plain text and, and a timestamp and you, you got my problem solved. So, and I, I understand that you guys said, okay, let's run a POC. Let's see if we can cut that from, let's say two days a week down to one day a week. In other words, 50%. Let's see if we can automate 50% of the root cause analysis. And, and so you funded a POC, how, how did you test it? You, you put you know, synthetic you know, errors and problems in there, but how did you test that it actually works, Najati? 
Yeah. So um, we, we wanted to take it to the next level, which is meaning that we wanted to back test is with existing SARS. Um, and we decided, uh, you know, we, we chose uh, four different products from four different verticals, uh, data center, security, collaboration, and enterprise networking. Um, and we find out a SARS where the engineer uh, put some kind of log uh, in the resolution summary. So they close the case and uh, in the summary of the SR, they put, I identified these log lines and they led me to the root cause. And we, in, we ingested those log bundles and um, we, we tried to see if Zebrium can surface ex, uh, that exact same log line in their analysis. Mm -hmm. So we initially did it uh, with R3 ourselves. And um, after uh, 50 tests or so, uh, we were really happy with the results. They, I mean, almost most of them, uh, we saw the log line that we were looking for, um, but that was not enough. And we brought it, of course, to our management and they said, okay, let's let's try this with real users because the log being there is one thing, but uh, the engineer reaching to that log is another thing. So we wanted to make sure that when we put it in front of our users, our engineers, they can actually come to that log themselves. Because, you know, we, we know this platform, uh, so we can, you know, uh, make searches and find whatever we are looking for, but we wanted them to do that. So we extended our pilot um, to some selected uh, engineers um, and they tested with their own SRs. Um, also do the, some back testing for some SRs which are closed in the past or recently. Um, and uh, with, with a sample set of, I guess, close to 200 SRs, um, we find out like uh, majority of the time, almost 95% of the time, um, Z, uh, the engineer could find the log they were looking for in uh, Zebrium's analysis. Yeah, okay, so you were looking for 50%, you got to 95%. And my understanding is you actually did it with four Pretty well-known Cisco products, WebEx Client, uh, uh, DNA Center, I Identity yes. Services Engine, ISE, and then, then UCS, yes. uh, Unified yes. Compute. So you use actual real data, uh, and, and that was kind of your proof, proof point. But Atri, so that sounds pretty impressive. And, and you've, have you put this into production now, and what have you found? Well, yes, we're, uh, we've launched this with the four products that you mentioned. We're providing um, our TAC engineers with the ability, whenever a, uh, whenever a support bundle for that product gets attached to the support request, we are processing it using Sense and then providing that Sense analysis to the TAC engineer for their review. So are you seeing the results in production? I mean, are you actually able to, to, to reclaim that time that people are spending? I mean, it was literally almost two days a week uh, down to you know, a part of a day. Is that what you're seeing in production? And what are you able to do with that extra time? And are people getting their weekends back? Are you putting them on more strategic yeah. tasks? How are you handling that? Yeah, so... Um... So what we're seeing is, and I can tell you from my own personal experience using this tool, that troubleshooting any one of the cases, I don't take more than 15 to 20 minutes to go through the Zebrium report. And I know within that time, either what the root cause is, or I know that Zebrium doesn't have the information that I need to solve this particular case. So um, we've definitely seen uh, well, it's been very hard to measure exactly how much time we've saved per engineer, right? Um, what we, again, anecdotally, what we've heard from our users is that um, out of those three hours that they were spending per day, we're definitely able to reclaim at least one of those hours. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and what, even more importantly, um, you know, what the kind of feedback that we've gotten in terms of, I think, one statement that really summarizes how Zebrium's impacted our workflow was from one of our users. And they said, um, well, you know, until you provide us with this tool, log analysis was a very black and white affair, but now it's become really colorful. And I mean, if you think about it, log analysis is indeed black and white. You're looking at it on a terminal screen where the background is black and the text is white, or you're looking at it as a text where the background is white and the text is black. But what's, what they're really trying to say is there are hardly any visual cues that help you navigate these logs, which are so esoteric, so dense, et cetera. 
Um, but what Zebrium does is it provides a lot of color and context to the whole process. So now you're able to quickly get to, um, you know, using their word cloud, using their uh, interactive histogram, um, using the summaries of every incident, you're very quickly able to summarize what might be happening and what you need to look into, like what are the important aspects of this particular log bundle that might be relevant to you. Um, so we've definitely seen that. A really great use case that kind of encapsulates all of this was uh, very early on in our experiment, there was, there was this uh, support request that had been escalated to the business unit or the development team. And the TAC engineer had a, a really, um, they had an intuition about what was going wrong because of their experience, because of you know the symptoms that they'd seen. They kind of had an idea, but they weren't able to convince the development team because they weren't able to find any evidence uh, to back up what they thought was happening. And we, it was entirely happenstance that I happened to pick up that case and did an analysis using Zebrium. And then I sat down with a tech engineer and we were very quickly, within 15 minutes, we were able to get down to the exact sequence of events that highlighted what the customer thought was happening, evidence of what the, so not the customer, what the tech engineer thought was the, um, was a root cause. And then we were able to share that evidence with our business unit and, you know, redirect their resources so that we could chase down what the problem was. And that really has been, that really shows you how that color and context helps. Uh, in log analysis. Interesting. You know, we do a fair amount of work in the cube in the RPA space, the robotic process automation. And the narrative in the press when our RPA first started taking off was, oh, it's, you know, machines replacing humans and we're going to lose jobs. And, and what actually happened was people were just eliminating mundane tasks and, and the, the employees actually very happy about it. But what, my question to you is, was there ever a reticence amongst your team? Like, oh, wow, I'm going to, I'm going to lose my job if the machine's going to replace me. Or have you found that people were excited about this? And what's been the reaction amongst the team? Well, I think, you know, every automation and AI project has that immediate gut reaction of you're automating away our jobs and so forth. Uh, and there is, initially, there's a little bit of reticence. But, I mean, it's like you said, once you start using the tool, you realize that, it's not your job that's getting automated away. It's just that your job's becoming a little easier to do and it's faster and more efficient. And you're able to get more done in less time. That's really what we're trying to accomplish here. At the end of the day, Zebrim will identify these incidents. They'll do the correlation, et cetera. But if you don't understand what you're reading, then that information is useless to you. So you need the human, you need the network expert to actually look at these incidents. But what we are able to skin away or get rid of is all of the fat that's involved in our, you know, in our process. Like without having to download the bundle, which, you know, when it's many gigabytes in size and now we're working from home with the pandemic and everything, you're, you know, pulling massive amounts of logs from the corporate network onto your local device, that takes time. And then opening it up, loading it in a text editor, that takes time. All of these things are we're trying to get rid of and instead, we're trying to make it easier and quicker for you to find what you're looking for. So it's like you said, you take away the mundanity, you take away the, um, the difficulties and the slog, but you don't really take away the work. The work still needs to be done. Yeah, great. Guys, thanks so much. Appreciate you sharing your story. It's quite, quite fascinating, really. Thank you for coming on. Thanks for having us. You're very thanks welcome. So okay, in a moment, I'll be back to wrap up with some final thoughts. This is Dave Vellante and you're watching The Cube. So today we talked about the need not only to gain end-to-end -end visibility, but why there's a need to automate the identification of root cause problems. And doing so with modern technology and machine intelligence can dramatically speed up the process 
and identify the vast majority of issues right out of the box, if you will. And this technology, it can work with log bundles in batches or with real-time data. As long as there's plain text and a timestamp, it seems Zebrium's technology will get you the outcome of automating root cause analysis with very high degrees of accuracy. Zebrium is available on-prem or in the cloud. Now this is important for some companies on-prem because there's really some sensitive data inside logs that for compliance and governance reasons, companies have to keep inside their four walls. Now Zebrium has a free trial, of course, <laughs> they'd better, right? So check it out at zebrium.com. You can book a live demo and sign up for a free trial. Thanks for watching this special presentation on theCUBE, the leader in enterprise and emerging tech coverage. I'm Dave Vellante, and we'll see you next time.